alcohol, is it? Um, yeah, I think everything's working fine. All right, I'm starting the show. All right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm here. All right, I'm playing the opening, so I'll let you know when you're live. Cool. All right, Mr. R, you're live. All right. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Bag Talk. I'm your host, Mr. R, a.k.a. Mr. Retarded. I got my super producer with me in the booth. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Zenruko, and tonight's guest is Junson Chan. Uh, we've got an America First plan truster in the building. Junson is a content creator. He follows the news, and uh, we met recently, and he tapped into the bets, man. We're all the way locked in and tapped in. So, Junson, do you want to introduce yourself for the show? Yes. Uh, there we go. I unmuted the mic. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I actually d done anything like this. But, uh, yeah, my name is Junson Chan. Uh, I don't even know how to really describe how or what I do because I've done, like, so many things throughout my life. But uh, I'm in my late 30s. I've been following politics since really I think 2000 or maybe 2004 and then I didn't get serious about it until 2008 when everybody was you know complaining about Obama mm -hmm. and uh, you know I've seen it all you know uh, Tea Party um, you know of course the Trump election you know we got the George Bush era and even before that was Ross Perot and you know the whole you know Clinton fiasco. So that's the political side in a nutshell. And then, you know, I've uh, I came back to Christ in 2010 because I've had so many struggles with money because just one day I just gave up. I was like, all right, you win, God. Just help me solve my money problems. I, I can't do this on my own. So I have extensive investing experience, mostly losing money, of course. <laughs> so for a market tuition, right? Oh, sorry, what was that? Pay paying the market tuition, as they call it. Oh, yeah. I definitely paid a lot in tuition fees. Uh, <laughs> Forex trading fees, uh, real estate, stocks. Uh, E-Trade even screwed me during the 2008 crisis because mm. I, I, I desperately wanted to buy Bear Stern puts on Friday because I, I really thought it was going to crash, and it did. And then on Monday, it went to like two bucks or whatever before going bankrupt. So I could have made 30, 40 grand as a college student. And E-Trade yep. completely screwed me. Because they refused to credit my account with those six hundred dollars, I was so mad. Oh, so the money didn't clear in time. Nope, not, it didn't clear until like several months later, and I knew it was all. Uh, you know, oh yeah, can we curse yeah. your show or? No, uh, no, you can by all means. Oh, go yeah. ahead. It we, was we like to stay optical, but we have a go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. it was it was complete bullshit. So <laughs> yeah, so I did that for a while. I, did like a World of Warcraft gold farming guide selling thing. So that was actually Let's go. So Let's go, really dude. Good. That's finance. Yep. Not and bad. we've got we've got guys in here buying Pokemon packs. We've got all sorts of gamers doing finance. There's all sorts of ways to uh to make money. Real quick, I noticed you do coding, you know, you make content, mm -hmm. do all this stuff. Uh, I'd say you have like a pretty good skill set. Would you say you're someone who believes in like, you know, the, like Anything that you know how to do is something you don't have to pay someone to do, and it kind of saves you time, and you know you know what you're going to do with it. Would you would you recommend people uh, kind of not like try things out, but just have um, you know if you're going to be a content creator, you probably want to learn how to do this stuff, um, or if you're going to be you know involved in social media in general. But you know that's that's one less thing that you have to uh, worry about getting like cheated on, uh, and it's just good to have those skills. Oh, okay, yeah, I think I know what you're asking. Yeah, so basically. Um... Sky Adams, I mean, I don't know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I yeah, might be a little bit cuck, but he does have okay. one good thing that he talks about, which is called a talent stack, is what he calls it. Okay. So, based, so for those of you who are not familiar, Sky Adams talks about having a talent stack where you, you're not going to be the best at a particular skill, like coding or trading or being a public speaker or, you know, looking good or whatever, right? But if you get kind of good at a bunch of different skills and then combine them into a synergy mm -hmm. them into a synergy, 
And I uh, hear it myself as I went. And then, um, uh, what you call it? And and then you combine it, then you actually become very powerful. And then he used Donald Trump as a pretty big, a good example. Trump's not the best like uh, speaker, but he's very good at it. Uh, he's not like the most. Um, what it, what was it else he said? He's not. Uh, he's not the best builder in the world, but he's very good at it. And then he's um, he's not the richest man in the world, but he obviously has a lot of money. So and then he and then there's a bunch of other skill sets that Trump has. And when he combines all of that, you know, then you get a real powerhouse. So that's like the that's talent. True. That's the talent stack in uh, in general. Oh, and then of course uh, social. Oh yeah, I forgot. He's also very good with media and social media. He's not yes. the best, but right. If he combines that with all the other stuff that he does and self promotion, yeah, Trump's you know super powerhouse so in, in that's my, a good point yeah so in my own way that's basically what i'm trying to do but it, it's all up to god so i forgave my parents like jesse Lee pearson says last friday i finally did it and then yeah just uh god will just take care of it and i just i just follow you know yeah very very freeing indeed yeah. um i was gonna say about the hold on let me tap into my notes um mm -hmm. Let's see. We can touch on Trump bets to start off because I see predicted as pumping. I don't mean to get off topic or anything. No, um, that's fine. I mean, we've got a lot to talk I, about. I, so. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm we'll, getting we'll, a we'll lot more of about questions about having, it. I'm sorry? Oh, no. I was just saying I'm getting a lot of questions about the Trump bets. So. Oh, yeah. No shortage of questions. I'm already seeing people in the DLive chat ask questions. Shout out to the DLive chat, by the way. Appreciate you guys tapping in. 194 people viewing, about 200 people tapped in. Um, appreciate all of you for watching. So just a quick recap. Whoops, Carter just texted me. Carter, I, I see you, and uh, I'm going to unmute you. I just heard you through your mic. Whoopsies, sorry, my uh, DLive audio started playing. Okay, so we touched uh, briefly on having, you know, a skill set. Um, and when you, when you have, you know, you don't have to be the best, like you said, but when you have a pretty good grasp on a number of, you know, if you're a multifaceted person, you can deliver results in more than one field. Uh, that does combine for like a, a powerful effect. And then also when you have the, the talent stack, so to speak, you know what you're not talented with and you know where you're going to need help, where you're going to need to tap into, you know, the, the high level source because you don't have the, the skills or the knowledge necessary. So it's good for self-awareness as well. That's what I wanted to say. I briefly forgot. I was dealing with a technical issue on our, on our, um, Discord. We got Carter in here. I'm gonna. Um, I had to server mute you. I'm gonna unmute you right now, Carter. You want to tap in real quick? Um, he is also another America First plan truster. Very oh, smart yeah. with the finance, and he's been going viral lately on Twitter yeah. uh, for his talk on the Great Reset. I loved that clip too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah hey. Um, thanks for coming in, Jason. It's. It was cool to. Um, you know, it's cool to have you here and. Uh, appreciate you joining, uh, hopping all aboard the tap in train. Oh, yeah. Tap um, in. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I I like I admired your patience on these bets, and now you're just seeing green. Yeah. I saw your tweets. Um, I missed the first. My grandparents are in town, and so I missed it. How how old are you? Quickly. Uh, I'm only in the late thirties. So, okay. Yeah, like thirty seven, thirty eight. And you do real estate and some trading. Uh, no, I actually do. Altcoin, altcoin cryptocurrency mining, and I will be doing oh, okay. real estate once this bull run is. I'm going to try my best guess to guess when it's going to peak, and then try to exit, yeah. and then dump all my crypto. What's ZEC going to? What's the what? Zach ZEC. Oh, I don't actually trade that. Um, because the way I look at cryptocurrencies, I actually divide them into decentralized cryptos and then centralized cryptos mm. um so that pretty much means bitcoin and pretty much all the copycats are in that uh, decentralized category and then things like xrp which is controlled by a central authority that's centralized uh and then i mostly look at uh bitcoin litecoin and recently um ripple or xrp because the america first clips guy told me about it so I've yeah. been heavily buying. Actually, I've been buying all that up that I could with my mining profits. So, so real quick, Z Z E C. That's Zcash, right? Zcash. Yeah. Oh, that's what that. Yeah. Is. So it's at it's at seventy nine bucks right now. Um, 
24 hour trading volume of about 1 billion US dollars and it's down 8% in the last 24 hours but looks like it's picking up quite a bit of uh, mar market share and also price so okay. um, anyone in yeah. the chat tap in by all means if you uh, if you have a source on ZEC let's see your academic sources and uh, and see if they're any good hey Carter while you're still here we have a donation asking Carter tips for buying a house as an 18 hour wage cut 18 an hour uh, put as much down as you can and refinance it as much as you can without fucking yourself I don't know right. a ton about I don't know a ton about my mom's sounds about right state though so I could help you so I could or you know try to get Wait till the fucking economy collapses in the next six to twelve months, and um, you know, get it for 0.5 percent interest as a as a wage cock. I mean, my cousin's a wage cock, and he uh, owns a house in Texas. He got a great, uh, I want to say, 1,900 square foot, fully renovated, fully furnished home in a uh, Dallas suburb, about 40 minutes outside the city. Uh, for like two nineteen, and he, you know, you can do the first time home buyer thing where you only put down like three point five percent, and then he's play, he's paying like one point eight percent principal or something pretty small like that. Um, yeah, I mean, but I'd I'd I say get out of that wage cut job too. I mean, eighteen an hour, it's twenty twenty. <laughs> Yo, Puma, tap it in, everyone at Puma Safari on Twitter. What's up, What's up Puma? Puma? Hey, Puma. Yeah, man, Schmitty, you're gonna want to lock in and wait till the drop. Meanwhile, you know, you stack up, um, and you're gonna have to end up financing. So wait for that good um, percentage. You know, when the market crashes. Oh, real quick, Carter, while you're in here, thoughts on Bitcoin? I uh, see. I was gonna. I was interested to hear Jason about that. I mean, hopefully. You know, I went down to the nine-day EMA today. It was dumping pretty hard. I opened some longs at about eighteen six seven and eighteen seven. Um, so I've got two Bitcoin right now. And honestly, knowing Bitcoin, I feel like it'll just pump to all-time highs tomorrow on Thanksgiving for no reason. But I've got pretty tight stop losses because I'm not going to be there for some wick down to like sixteen k. Um, I've got about fifteen. No, well, no, I have too big. I have about. 50k in longs right now so i'm hoping to wake up to you know five or ten grand profit tomorrow but not really willing to lose more than four or five hundred bucks over it um so we'll see what happens but uh it's been pretty stagnant today relatively i mean it's but it moved down there was some pressure downwards and but i think it was good to test some support and i feel like tomorrow people will just be I, I just knowing Bitcoin, you know, you never know, but I feel like it'll just pump for no reason and go to all time highs on Thanksgiving tomorrow. That sounds about. I'd right, be yeah. interested. I'd be interested to hear what Jason has to say about it, though. Yeah, I'm actually on Coin Market Cap right now. I was taking a quick look. So, like, I don't actually day trade. Um, so, uh, so I'm not sure how much I may be able to help you. But that being said, it's. I mean, it's obviously going down because yeah, you know, it's basically the holidays. So everyone's just like, you know just cashing out a little bit. The other thing is, um, I guess for like the past, I don't know, few weeks, like cryptocurrencies across the board were just skyrocketing like crazy. So yeah. as you already know, when that happens, at some point it has to pull back. So apparently yeah. today was finally that pullback. Uh, and I actually was hoping it would pull back because, you know, when the major cryptos, that's the top 50, top 100 uh, cryptocurrencies of the world, and I just call them the majors. You know, it, it kills my altcoin mining uh, profits because everyone dumps all the altcoins just to buy, like, Bitcoin or Ripple or, you know, what, or right. what have you. So, um, yeah, um, as to if it's going to go up tomorrow, uh, usually on holidays, it's very, very slow. I mean, I know America doesn't uh, consist of the entire market share, but usually America is on vacation, so does the rest of the world, so... Uh, maybe it'll go up tomorrow, but I would probably wait until at least Friday. Uh, also, it's Black Friday, right? So probably everyone's going to be like buying stuff. Yeah. So, and uh, markets are actually open on Friday as well, right? Like stock. Till market. noon, right? Is it? Uh, stock markets, I think. Yeah, Till yeah. noon, I believe. Yeah, stock markets. So basically, the equity markets, like the non-cryptocurrency markets. Basically, mm. is it a normal business day? So if it's a normal business day, then you'll you should be able to see some kind of action. I guess in your case, I you're... Think, 
I think it they close at noon. I think it's a weird deal. I don't know if that's Thursday or Friday. One of the days they close at noon. I know that. I've never heard of that. That is very weird. I've, I think I've heard of it for uh, other holidays. I remember it happening a couple couple of times, I believe. Um, real quick, by the way, in the DLive chat, Yui says, Yui with the Ninja Gini says, oh. made 10K in the Discord, no cap. If you're not tapped in, what are you doing, Goofy? Wow. wow. Confirmed is true and real. That's amazing. Uh, Yui is way tapped in. Yeah, Finance Pepe's in the chat. Thank you, everyone. I just wanted to... Uh, to bring that up, appreciate the Ninja Gini big time. Thank you for being a big time player and donating. Five G Drip says XRP is the the standard. Um, do you believe that, Jensen? Wait, is that all he says? Is X what repeat that? <laughs> says, actually, he said less. He says XRP the standard, and then Discord link, and then he wants the Discord link, which we'll get it to you. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that's kind of br maybe. Do you mind uh, sending another diamond or maybe a ninja Gini or a ninja and, and kind of elaborating on that a little bit? I think I can figure out what he's trying to ask. Um, like for centralized uh, cryptocurrencies, XRP is the standard. Like if you're okay. a, if you're a bank, if you're JP Morgan Chase, if you're like a quote unquote reputable business, a big business, um, or a globalist business. You're not going to really want to use uh, something like Bitcoin because A, it's too volatile, and then B, if you're an evil globalist, you probably want control over everything because that's what globalists do. So Ripple and XRP is like basically perfect for that. Um, it's my understanding there are copycats to XRP. I can't remember. I don't have to do my research, but I think there are... Um, what is it? Uh, Stellar Lumens and Tron, but don't quote me on that because uh, like some of these cryptos like really confuse me, and then I have to like go look at it, and then because yeah, but yeah, but basically for centralized, this is very important. Centralized, where you don't want to be anonymous or you don't care, and you have to worry about AML and well, or anti money laundering and know your customer and regulations. Uh, yeah, XRP for now is a standard. Like they seem, they seem pretty tapped into this uh, global forex stuff. So, you know, because uh, some of you may already know, Ripple revealed that Bank of America is one of their clients, and then that's it. That's all I could read. They didn't say how much, and based on how much it's been going up like crazy, it must be a big, big contract. You know, so and. Foreign I didn't know that. Damn. Yeah, foreign currency uh, as trade volume per day, which is like U.S. dollars trades into euros that trades into like yen or whatever, is about twelve trillion per day with a T. All right, twelve trillion, and most of that is traded between uh, the big banks of the world. And I know that because I used to do foreign currency exchange in the two thousands, and I lost all my money doing it. <laughs> so, Very yeah. based, and also red pill. Yeah. So like, so like when you see that the globalists want like, you know, one world order and one currency and all that stuff, I mean, there's, there is a kind of like, um, sort of additional basic reason why they want to do that. Of course, it just happens to hurt us too, but you know, I guess we'll talk about that uh, later or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait for some viewers to filter out, right? Um... <sighs> So let's see. Let me. We'll ta We'll talk on real estate in a little bit. By the way, just a little audio. Um, you know, uh, what is it? Time timestamp. We just talked about crypto. That was just the crypto part. Um, Carter tapped in. You're gonna want to go back if you're listening to the replay and and tap into that. Um, <clears throat> so, right. Your bio says Christian gamer real estate. Um, we're both you know studying yeah. real estate in a way. I don't know how extensively you've done it. I you know like I said, I've got this course that. Um, that I purchased, and uh, that's that's going to get you ready for the test. But aside from that, uh, you know, I like I told you before the show started, I looked into raw land sales. You know, those don't require any sort of a certification, by the way. You can just buy and sell land. But um, and yeah, there's all sorts of incentives uh, for for buying land. Different counties that need development will uh, will pay you or give you free land with the promise of you starting some sort of a business or something. Mm. Um, so yeah, there, there's all sorts of things to look into there, and we'll t we'll touch on that more um do we want to talk a little bit about politics and, and election stuff um uh, yeah you know, i mean i still have it fresh in my head uh, and there's like there's like a million things floating around right now oh, but they're all white pills so you know that's what we love to hear yeah, yeah i mean so it's 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 so hard to get black pill i don't know how people are black pilled right now there's so much stuff coming out and it's all real 
and we don't need sources and it's all real man yo um, mr r don't forget the disclaimer oh yeah the disclaimer um we should put it in the the bio too but yeah invest at your own risk and do your own research <laughs> don't don't listen to us at all just kidding but um but yeah guys make sure to you know take your money seriously and by the way i've noticed people on predict it people who are on predict it are asking me questions i i'm not your dad okay you have to read the rules you're putting your money on predict it read the rules we all read it you know we have peace of mind knowing that uh they're, I don't, they're not closing these markets early they want to make as much money as possible and they reserve the right to wait as long as they need to to clear any ambiguity so Please read the rules and and take this money stuff seriously and invest at your own risk. Most importantly. Yeah, actually, do um, we want to talk about the Trump bets before we go? That would be a pretty decent segue into the politics. That's a good transition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tap into that. Yeah. So you posted on your Twitter. If you guys want to follow Jensen on Twitter, by the way, it's at Real Jensen Chan, I believe. Yep, I'm actually in the D Live chat. Let me just type in my. Go ahead. Name. Yeah, drop a comment. Follow him on D Live. Uh, I believe he's going to be starting up some streams on a, on a regular schedule as well soon. So you guys are going to tap in for his updates on the election and also markets. Um, so yeah, make sure you give him a follow, and I'll link his Twitter in the chat. We'll make sure to yep. get that all sorted out as well. But to touch on the Trump bets, we've got we had a few uh, new bets today, or I I placed a few new bets today, and they had to do with recounts whether there will be a recount, um, you know, in Wisconsin. And uh, I'm sorry, it's not specifically the recount, actually. It's it's whether B Biden's margin in Wisconsin shrinks by more than 100 votes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I like yes. 600 on that. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I threw some money. I put 100 on each of these. The uh, other one, uh, will there be a recount in Arizona? That's the other one I put money on. Um, both both still at decent prices. The Arizona one is cheaper. But do you want to just touch on kind of how you came across the Trump bets and like what what made you? Well, obviously you trust the plan, but you know what made you pull the trigger? Uh, <laughs> well, that would be you, because <laughs> hey, that's what we love to hear. I mean, there's so much uh, happening like since Monday that I don't even kind of remember. It's all like a blur because <laughs> like we were talking right. and then you're like, huh? And then here are the bets or whatever that you're trying it's like you know i should try this too it's like you know i kind of already oh know. yeah by the way how just for the viewers who are on the fence how how has it worked out for you who got in at, at a good price <clears throat> hello uh, wait viewers do we do we just cut out well i'm oh yui we're still here um i was just saying for the viewers how, how has it worked out for you you know getting in at a decent price how are your bets looking You there, Jensen? You cutting out? Oh, I thought you were asking someone else. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I was asking you. Yeah, now, just because I saw you get in this week, uh, which was a good time to get in. We've been tweeting about it and talking all about it, how, you know, we bet too early. And uh, we should have waited, but we didn't know how drawn out this would be. But you got in at the right time. How, how much are you up right now? Uh, well, it keeps fluctuating, but right now I'm at plus 16, 1,610. And, oh, and it goes up to like 2,200 bucks. Yeah. And it's not that like final be. form. <laughs> right. That's not even the max payout. We're sitting at a lot of these prices are like 20, 30 cents. You know, once it goes to 70, 80, it's, it's over. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. What are, what are your bets looking like? What did you end up getting? All right. <clears throat> so I put a, so if you go to my Twitter, everyone, like I posted a picture of it because I actually have to do full screen because I, I actually was adding the Wisconsin presidential vote margin an hour before this show. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Same. I. Uh, yep. I that was looking in. really good. <laughs> yeah. It's like eight cents all day. Yep. I mean, I actually, I actually have to pay a premium. It's, uh, mine was an average paid of like ten cents, but I was buying at like nine, ten, and even eleven cents. I think I bought a couple at twelve just to max myself out. Yep. So let's see. So I'll go from top. I mean, to dude, bottom. you, 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 you still caught the floor for real. Oh yeah. Like you're in. You're in at the bottom. Yeah. So basically, the way I looked at it was. For whatever reason, everyone thinks Trump's going to lose because obviously a lot of shit libs are, you know, going berserk, right? So that's actually suppressing the price. And it seems to be that the price seems to hover around 8 to 10 cents. So uh, that's what I was looking at. The second rule that I was looking at was I read the predicted rules. And the one, because I know um, Mr. R told me about the Fox, the Fox bet, uh, where they're going to. Yeah, yeah. Where they're going to call the. Are they going to, what was it, like pull back the call or something like that? Will they reverse the call? And you tap me in on some info that we'll bring up for sure. Um, the Will Fox uncall any jurisdiction? Oh, right, and right. Yeah. So <clears throat> I kind of wanted to do that bet, but the, 
But the reason why I did not do it was because I, because in the rules, it says the end date was 12, 14, 11, 59 yep. p.m. EST. So that's when the state electors actually vote. And it's Fox News. And for whatever reason, Ru Rupert Murdoch and like everybody is just like so anti-Trump. So even if it's clear that they should um, reverse the call, they might just not do it just out of spite. You know, that's true. So, but the good news that's is that's a concern uh, I had as well. Yeah, but the good news is that I mean I haven't checked since you know, I guess yesterday or Monday, but it looks like I think it went up to like fourteen, fifteen cents, right? Yeah, it did. At, currently, it's at nine, <clears throat> so mm. it's it's kind of corrected. But I'm gonna leave a little little <clears throat> bag to to ride in these uh in in the Fox one. I'm not gonna bet everything. I'm not gonna bet the house on it. You know, I've been pumping it into safe bets. Um, yeah, that's, like what the, I, that's what I would do because there's actually all because they're opening so many markets You might as well just buy up all the safe markets Cause It's that's, true. Yeah, because yeah, all the stuff I have Sorry, is pretty safe, right? Mm hmm So from top yep. to bottom I have which party will win Nevada in 2020 either I came up with that or maybe you told me about that because I know you sent me some Ah, uh, yes, I did I told you to tap in on this one. I'm up a little yeah. bit on that one. Um, I bought some today yeah. But yeah, I saw that they have enough stuff to uh, to reverse that state, and I just you know, yeah, that's I, the thing with some of these. I don't know if the state will end up getting reversed. Um, <clears throat> you know, if, if all if all the states will get end up getting reversed, but it's it's worth putting money down in my opinion. If if any one of these bets hit, then uh, you know my my losses are, are covered there. So you know, that's I would say that what that's not maybe the safest bet. Because technically, I think the the safest bet for me is betting no on a South Carolina Democratic primary winner elected president. Because you know that's not really a state; it just means will Joe Biden be elected president, and you bet the no. Right. Um, yeah, that that's, I, that's that I had maxed out on. That was actually yep. one of the first ones. No, that's the second one I bought, and then the before and before is woman VP in twenty twenty, and then you vote. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure you say no. Yeah, bought that at no. It was really cheap too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, average is nine cents is what I paid, and then already up like what was that six hundred and fifty bucks or whatever total on those two. Uh, but obviously, I'm not gonna sell. I'm just gonna basically ride this out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got pretty lucky. Like we all bet way too early. We underestimated like how long this would take. Because I'm down, you know, pretty good amount. I've been down a couple grand the whole time, but really? at this point, just gotta ride it out and manage the account. Yeah, because I bought. I bought uh, Woman VP at like 15 cents. Oh, that's cool, by the way. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're kind of cutting out a bit, whoever's talking. <clears throat> that's uh, Steel Puma. Probably just want to hold your phone a little closer. But oh, okay. um, real quick, oh, yeah, so so that that's the thing. If you bet too early, the, the strategy that I've kind of seen is, you know, if you do have some cash, you pump it into a riskier bet. You take the profits out of that, put it into a safer one. That's kind of the opposite of what you're supposed to do, which is make a safe investment, then collect profits, then then be a little more risky with the profits. <clears throat> but um, you know, if if you're not quite as liquid and you don't want to put any more money in, then you could try to you know play the margins, then pump that into a safer bet. A lot of these I'm gonna just leave and and wait till they cash out. You know, wait till they actually settle. Um, yeah, because yeah, because the way I looked at it was, I will give this as much time as it needs to in order to for it to um, turn my way. So right. there was a study done, I want to say 2016, 2017. I know I covered it in one of my really old Bitcoin Clown World videos, <laughs> and uh, that's what I called it, the show, I guess. And um, they actually did a study where it says if you buy Bitcoin at you know day one. How long will it take? How many days do you have to wait before you are in profit? And it was a very interesting chart. After three to 60, 90 days, your chances of making a profit was like 10%. If you wait like six months, it goes up to like 25%. If you wait one year, it goes up to like 30 to 50%. And if you wait two years or longer, or something like I'm. My, uh, it's been a while since I read that article, but basically the idea was the longer you wait, the more likely that the result that you want, you know, uh, happens. Yep. So, yeah, and just to touch real quick on on options trading, because this is kind of reminding me of that. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, um, in options trading, there's contracts that are for sale. It's not shares. It's different contracts, yeah. and they're based on different prices and <laughs> and also dates you know when they expire yeah, so dates if and you strike prices 
Right. So if you buy, you could have the right strike price, and this is something that kind of screws people over when they first get started. You could have the right strike price, but your expiration date is too early, and the stock never goes to your, you know, the price that you're betting on it to go to. It never reaches that within that time frame. So when we say, you know, buy the further out expiration date because that gives you kind of insurance. Um, <clears throat> the longer you wait, the, the the better your chances are of, of that price actually hitting and your call being in the money. And you know, you cr you guess the correct price by the right time. That's the second part that people kind of uh, get tripped up on. Get tripped up on. You have to guess the right price by the right time. Uh, and if you buy, if you're always buying closest expiration, that that could screw you over. Um, if you don't guess the right price. So um, just to kind of touch, you know, it's the options are a lot like bets. You're, you're betting on, I think this stock will be at this price by this time. And if I'm right, I'll get paid, you know, handsomely for it. So that's kind of the same idea. Um, options are just a little more confusing. The interface is different and it, it tends to confuse people. So just to tie that in. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and that's also why uh, I, back when I took finance class, like, I don't know, it must have been 12 years ago. Yeah, it's called the time premium of a uh, stock option. So the more time there is, the more you have to pay for it. Because mm -hmm. mathematically speaking, the more time you have, the more likely the result you want will occur. And then you have to pay a premium for that. Which is why when I buy options, I actually like buying uh, leaps or long-term options. Preferably two years, because that's the longest. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, like right now, for example, our buddy uh, Condor is buying <clears throat> Nokia uh, calls and, and I believe Ericsson calls like two years out because uh, he's saying they're going to be dominating the European 5G space. They're one of the few companies that aren't uh, Chinese, so even for national security purposes, um, he, thinks, he thinks that um, Nokia and Ericsson are going to be big 5G players in the next few years. So that's, that's an example of very big picture, very far out, and for that reason, you don't want to bank a lot of money on a, on an option that expires soon you want to pay that premium you want the insurance um you want to actually have a good chance of being right oh by the way everyone who's in chat if you haven't followed go ahead and hit the follow button you notice how close we are to that follower goal it's very close would be crazy if we hit that goal uh while we were streaming so please go ahead and tap in and follow if you don't already um do we want to talk about trump's you know the legal team's press conference today i feel like there's a lot to be uh, discussed there uh yeah i mean i mean i saw the whole thing and it's and it's still now a blur now that i'm trying to recall it <laughs> yeah it was really well just good. to sum it up by yeah. the way i don't i don't know if this is confirmed or not i think this is the first time ever that they've held like a public hearing yes. where, the, where you know yes. we the people and we was, the people can call in and, and talk to literally rudy giuliani and, and these senators and stuff yeah, so. that was also apparently like an actual legal proceeding so oh. like the so the reason why they were presenting evidence is because it's actual evidence so it actually will be used in the court of law kind of kind of <laughs> thing because obviously you know they're all launching lawsuits everywhere so uh, they could right. like they could cite the hearing as uh, evidence like yeah uh, yeah I mean, obviously I'm not a lawyer but uh, I just I didn't know that I just know that as a legal proceeding that's why Giuliani obviously was there Jenna Ellis was there. And that's why Trump had to call in because he knew how important this hearing was. Like, yes, for yeah. optics and to you know fight back the gasoline, but also to you know help with the legal case because this thing's definitely going to the Supreme Court. So um, I think because I'm pretty sure their deadline has got to be December 14th, but I'm not even sure about that because I mean I, I I don't I actually this is the part where I actually don't know. It's like we have the state elector stuff on December 14th, but then we also have Supreme Court. Which I think we'll actually vote in our favor, even if John F. Ward Roberts betrays us, right? And he sides <laughs> with the uh, shit libs, right? Scalia He's a good. Freemason, bro. <laughs> Bruh. No, he is. He's a Freemason. Oh, oh, man. Somebody get Kyrie in here, man. We need to, we need to dive deep I, into this. I, I, if I could butt in real quick, yeah. I, the, best, the best possible outcome is where one of the libs votes with us. Like, that is invaluable like how, how significant that would be oh yeah if one of the libs voted with us that's uh, basically it, the libs you know admitting or at least acknowledging voter fraud on the yeah whole. I mean, or serious or right yeah if they have any any morality they will you know the worst outcome is five four yeah where yeah. amy coney bears the deciding vote right yeah, because like all of Trump's appointees, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys know this, maybe a couple of you do, but 
all of Trump's appointees, Gorsuch, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, and of course, ACB, they all actually clerked or worked on the Bush versus Gore 2000 Florida yep. election fiasco. And they all and they all work for Bush. So they already have extensive experience with stuff like this. But now it's on a yep. larger scale. But it's pretty much the same thing for them. So, you know, I'll, so unless they're being threatened, right, I can't see them actually voting against uh, against Trump on this. So it's it's yeah, because unless they're being threatened, they really can't let this election become like a complete mockery. You know, like the world is watching America right now saying, is are you really did you just let your election get stolen? This is the gold yeah. standard, you know, of the, the free world. If this if, if American elections aren't fair, I think that would entail a lot of. Uh, unforeseen consequences yeah, but um yeah um because I, I, like when i go on yahoo finance i'm like even more cynical looking at it when i do my you know bitcoin videos because i know it's all just lies <laughs> right like there's like yeah that's unusual. true we've all this is a good um you know one of the sources that we tap into a lot is at smarter trader on twitter he says you know mm -hmm. and this is something you don't really think about you kind of notice it over time with investing a lot of people in the investment world are just lying um, whether it's publications, whether it's guys trying to sell you on their course, they're just lying. Yeah. So here's a perfect example. He, he says it himself. It's just like politics. Um, and you see how much lying is going on right now by the media. So take that into account next time you're trying to make a decision. You know, don't put too much weight into the media's words. You know, their job right now is to tell you the opposite of what's going on. So you got to just assume that that's not, this isn't the only time that happens and uh, be very, very skeptical of of their media, so to speak, you know, our media is anonymous sources and uh, and people that you know you you literally trust what they're saying. It's not like it's academic. It's not like it's uh, you can you know cite it in a an essay or something. It's just it's just off of the strength of what they're saying that you're trusting. It. But you know, obviously, we do have real sources. I don't want to diminish um, you know what we do have. It's just that we're we're not addicted to sources and and citing all of the uh all the things we say because we have actually original thoughts and and we like to share them with people um and a lot of the times you know like when Carter predicted pretty much everything down to a T uh well well in advance of the election you know you see things like this kind of play out and you realize uh maybe maybe the source isn't what what's crucial in being right and making the right choice um but yeah so just to uh sum that up real quick also did Trump really? Did he really make it uh, cool to to do firing squad again? Is that a is that real? What I have no. What, did he say something about that? Let me read off this post because uh you know I was I saw this and I was like real, but you know you know me I I, I like to think that um just as a baseline. So here is the here we go. The Daily Beast said this today. President Trump is trying to reinstate execution by firing squad before he leaves office. Now, me being a Q head, I went off. I said, don't be surprised when it's all real. And the treasonous agents who acted against the American people are being shot in the streets under Trump's command, you know, uh, because 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 obviously, you know, that's the natural course where things that's where I take things. But um, the people do say that he's he's going to make mass arrests. I don't I don't know if he's going to do execution by firing. Yeah, squad. I think that might be a, a yeah, hit piece or a uh, oh, I'll let you finish. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was just saying France and France and tweeted Trump just reinstated execution by firing squad. It's real. Um, that was my source on that, by the way. Steve France and very high level source. Steve, um, I've, I've heard Nick Fuentes mention him a lot, but I don't actually know. I actually don't even know his Twitter. Um, it's but, um, King Cowpoke on Twitter. Um, I actually met well, France super high, last weekend in DC. Super high IQ. Super high IQ and super high level Q level source. Um, so yeah, man, that's definitely, you're going to want to tap in at King Cowpoke on Twitter. Yeah. He's and, got uh, a picture of a cowboy. It looks like. Yep. That's the one. Okay. Um, he's going to have some upset, but that's not actually for, yeah, no, that's not actually for Anson though, for anyone who heard me say that, All right. that's, um, you know, Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> it's a fan page. Q heads will be vindicated. Says Jimbo Zoomer. Yeah, it's true, man. Why do you think they're flying out? Did you, by the way, did you tap into anything I said about the military air traffic? You might have, you might have not followed me at the time. I was following that pretty closely the last few weeks. Um, I have no idea what that is. So this, I follow this guy, um, Mil Spec Ops on YouTube. He live streams the military air activity, okay. and uh, well, not regularly. He just started last week because of what was going on. You know, out of nowhere. I think uh, it was last Monday or Tuesday. Um, <laughs> Out of nowhere, there was a five times spike, you know, 500%. Uh, is that right? I think that sounds right. Anyway, 
five times spike in uh, overall military air activity. There's normally like 250 military planes in the sky, and, and last Monday or Tuesday it was like 1,000. And by Wednesday, I think it was up to like 1,500. So, I mean, they were moving people around, and, uh, and, and he's tapped into the, you know, what they do with the flights and what each flight means. And he says a lot of them were uh, rendition flights. He said, like, that basically the, the government, whatever assets they have in custody, they were taking them, flying them over international waters and uh, interrogating them. But, you know, or they could be going to, to prisons and, and moving assets around. But oh. nonetheless, I think it's at the, at the least, I think it's connected to riots and stuff that will happen. Um, you know, post Trump win, yeah, at would, the very least. I mean, I, yeah, I would have just simply ask him: Is it troop movements? Because I know Trump. Because I know in 2018, Trump passed an executive order that basically lets him declare martial law without calling really? it that. Wait, did you know about that? Or I did not. That's dope. Oh, okay. So uh, there was a post on the Roosh V forum. Uh, you know, it's like days back and then someone actually mentioned that trump had a 2018 and it was september 2018 so basically what the executive order does is it allows trump to uh deploy special ops and military on the ground to suppress insurrections um it allows him to seize uh, news media outlets and social media outlets and um yeah basically do whatever it takes to um you know suppress quote unquote a coup uh yeah so all that stuff where trump's getting ready for mass arrest he's definitely i actually think he is trying to get ready for that because someone has to pay for all this election fraud crap and there's gonna be a lot right. of criminals <clears throat> so, and if it's if whether if whether if he's waiting for an antifa riot or something to shut it down um yeah. i heard someone say that they have a bunch of info on antifa and they want to arrest everyone i don't know if I don't I know if we so. have the time for that. I hope so. I I mean, but yeah, by I all mean, means, I hope so. The main problem is going to be Bill Barr because he doesn't prosecute anyone. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm hoping that at this point Trump's kind of figured that out. So he's got some kind of plan right. for that. Um, some kind of a plan, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has thought of all of this before. I mean, he retweeted himself on his timeline in two, from 2012 where he's actually saying, hey, Mitt Romney, you should look into voter fraud. You had votes stolen from you. So Trump saw this even way before he became, well, he ran for president. So this was like eight yeah. years ago. So that's why I pretty much trust the plan. Plus I read his books. Um, in fact, that's what I actually used for the real estate stuff that I have. Um, I mean, now we're going to wind up going to a digression, uh, but uh, well, let's just finish the uh, martial law thing. Um, real quick. Yeah. Yui says, thank you for the diamond. Yui says, Firing squad is real. It's in the federal register. What is that? What's the federal register? Someone tap in. Um, uh, need somebody with a yeah. slightly higher IQ to tap in on that. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I could Google it. <laughs> I'll Google it. I mean, I, don't don't get me wrong. I will Google it. Federal, because it's real, so we got to confirm it. So federal register. I mean, we used the to do firing fire. squads. Is the, the Federal Register is the official journal of the federal government of the United States that contains government agency rules, proposed rules, and public notices. It is published every weekday except on federal holidays. Wow. Oh. Okay, so huh. that's that's interesting. Uh, firing Squad is real. Um, you know, someone, and this is Q-level stuff. I know we got some Q-heads in the chat. And I just describe anything that's, like, high-level as Q. I'm not, you know, I'm not always talking about the guy Q and I. Apparently... You know, this is all like reverse engineered for me because of, of course I hear about the meme first, but you know apparently a Q is like an actual thing in the government. It's like a top level security uh, classification and like all that stuff. All that stuff is real. So um, yeah. and apparently, apparently as well, Trump has a Q team, which is more so to do with the QAnon thing um, of you know of people that actually support him in the Republican establishment um, because we know Republicans hate him and we don't really like Republicans either. We actually pledge our allegiance to Donald Trump. And to yeah. America, yeah, America first. That's uh, sure. that's our that's our allegiance. <laughs> Q just, heads rise, rise up, yes, yeah, sir. Thank yeah. you, Danny Cooper, Gator. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we were t we were talking about the press conference and all the corruption. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to touch on, having to do with that, is the Kraken, um, and how Trump retweeted this last night. An article that says the Kraken is DOJ Department of Justice. Uh, it's a it's a cyber warfare program meant to you know monitor fraud. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so when I woke up this morning, I retweeted that um, Lynn Wood, I think, and someone else that was also in the Trump team. Um, 
uh, I think actually maybe it was General Flynn. I can't remember. It was it was this morning. Um, pardoned? Sorry. Uh, you talking about uh, Flynn was pardoned? No, not Flynn, but well, it was pardoned. But the actual Kraken, like so. Actually, I actually put it in the replies here because it was actually important. Uh, Sydney Powell's. Uh, oh man, I retweeted. I put there in the reply the link to the Marshall report. Is it to to my tweet? Um, not exactly. No, I have to go to your Twitter. But um, but yeah, that Kraken is actually real. Um, actually, I'm gonna retweet it on my uh, Twitter timeline. But Linwood or General Flynn or maybe both, they actually retweeted this Sydney Powell's Kraken is a DOD cyber warfare program. That's it. DOD, Department of yeah. Defense, not Justice. Sorry. The DOJ, I believe, is very corrupt, right? Yeah. Like, that's why they're cucking us right now. But Trump's, you know, trying hard to deal with that. But, yeah, I read that whole thing this morning. That, thing's, that thing is actually real. And basically, I think what I can piece together is... This was, an, and this is also really, relates to Q, right? So basically Q and all that stuff is actually a counterintelligence program created by General Flynn. So that's why they, you know, butt fucked him. Uh, so the, the counterintelligence program was actually a, uh, I forgot the name, of, what do they call themselves? The new cyber security division of the Department of Defense. That was created by Trump and I guess Flynn. And what they did was they actually, was monitoring in real time all the traffic between all the Dominion servers and all the election fraud stuff and pretty much all the other stuff. Because in 2018, we know the Democrats did a test run on the uh, vote stealing and stuff, right? Yep. So and I believe there was also a sting operation in Broward County. Is that correct? I don't know about that. But there's that might actually have to do with this election. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. But this this whole thing, Trump already knew. And this whole thing was set up as a sting. So... Sidney Powell. <clears throat> so here's the interesting thing. You know that a couple of days ago they the Trump team tweeted out this really weird tweet that says Sidney Powell is not part of our team or yeah, yeah. Everyone got putting distance between them and Sidney Powell, yep. Yeah, so it sounded black pill and then I thought there's something really off with it. But it turns out to be yep. a super white pill because what's happening is Giuliani and Jenna Ellis, they are following, I mentioned this in my last bit, uh, bit shoot video actually on, uh, from yesterday, but basically there are actually multiple lawsuits with different tracks. So yep. Giuliani is face, basically filing a civil case. So basically the reward or recompense or the, uh, the, the compensation they're looking for is to, over, yep. is to basically overturn the election, right? Throw out the illegal votes, count the legal votes, Trump wins everything. But that's a civil case. Now, let me real quick yeah. make the distinction. You know, you're making the distinction. The point is civil and criminal, two different things. And yeah. then also, which we'll touch on, we have the military aspect of things. Uh, I'll read that out shortly. But go ahead and explain the criminal part. Yeah, so this is where, so Sidney Powell is a registered military lawyer. This is really important. So she has the sole authority to basically prosecute treason. So if you want yeah. the firing squads, Sidney Powell is your, uh, your, your, your woman. <laughs> so uh, they have to make the separate distinction because uh, it's, the, it's you know, a legal, like the legal law. Like you can't prosecute civil stuff in a criminal case just like you can't prosecute criminal stuff in a civil case, if that makes sense. And, and you also can't be part of the Trump legal team, right? They want to put distance between her and them just, yes. just on paper. Yes, exactly. Because they're making. Because right, these are the. Th this is actually a uh, post that was made by Sam Sow, a Rushvi uh, veteran. So he actually explained this whole thing. He said these these lawyers are playing at the highest level in the world. So they have to make sure that they dot their i's and t's or whatever that saying is, and they uh, they know stuff like the back of their hand that we are not even aware of. So mm -hmm. that's so that's basically what uh, what that is. So. Basically, Sidney Powell is going to be the one spearheading like the tre treason trials. So, so it, it's really good stuff. It's really uh, fantastic. Um, and she was supposed to file something, some kind of lawsuit today, but um, I actually haven't heard anything about it. One second, yo, um, Lake Boy, thank you for the diamond. Says, what's this Johnson's Twitter at? He seems tapped in. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I'm gonna link it in the uh, in the D Live chat, and you guys can give him a follow. And also, if you don't mind dropping a comment, Jensen, uh, yeah. they'll give you a follow on D Live. Yo, Salty Sea Dog, 
Uh, Olivia's Pop and Bambo, 777. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Thanks for tapping in. All right, somebody's got you with the link for uh, at Real Jensen Chan on Twitter. Treason trials so based. Yeah, I was thinking they might not be real. I mean, you know, I, don't, I would never say it's not real. I was just doubting the source. But it's literally real, and it's in the federal ledger. Can anyone pull that up, by the way? Anyone in chat have time to look up today's federal ledger and see where that is? Yo, Puma just donated a dime. It says Jensen is tapped in. Yes. Hey, real, in. real quick. I see you, yep. Sorry, I got I to yep. tap out, boys. But, hey, Jason, thanks for coming on, bro. It's great talking with you. And Trump 2020, it's all real. Oh, it's yeah. all real. We'll, we'll get that was back tapped in, in the White House. Don't, don't you worry, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll get another four years to tap in, man. That was yeah. at Captain Alchemy on Twitter. Go ahead and give him a follow. He's private. Uh, he'll get to you soon. Let's get into all those. Don't worry. Big time regular of the show and uh, America First plan truster. So you're going to want to yeah, give him a it's follow. It's all real. It's political all real. Ma political mastermind. Yeah, and it's all it's it's getting realer and realer. That's a, an important distinction to make. Um, it's yeah. all real, and it's only going to get realer from here. Danny Cooper with the Ninja Gini. Yeah. Tucker's Paladin with the Ninja Gini. Yo, you guys are going off. Um, I think this is a question for Jason. Says, Thanks for coming on, Jason. I'm tapped into some eggnog and rum night right now. Okay, not a question, but that's awesome nonetheless. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Tucker's Paladin says, I'm one year into a 30-year mortgage for a 400K condo in a major U.S. metro, oh, parentheses, okay neighborhood. Am I, Am I screwed? Um, Tucker, can you actually? He's probably in the chat, so I could because I would need to know more info. Um, like what city? Oh yeah, because Tucker did say he really wanted to get my input, so that's why he was gonna super chat. Um, yeah, let's we can custom build some advice for you, Tucker. Um, yeah. it sounds like a serious matter. So yeah, actually, he is in a pretty serious thing. So uh, I, I want to at least you know try to help him out. Uh, so one year into a thirty-year mortgage, what uh, what's your month? I guess I should ask, like, how is your monthly cash flow? Like, uh, as long as you're at least keeping even or making a little bit of money, you should be okay. And what city, what major U.S. city is it? Uh, I guess we'll just wait for him to reply. Yeah, tap us in with some more um, developments, some more info. And uh, just in general, there was real estate advice asked earlier. Um, you want to get the best financing possible and refinance as, as often as possible. I believe you can do that. You know, you're buying the condo minimum unit, um, so I believe it should be no different. But and also, you know, you know, you're already in the mortgage, so you know what to expect uh, going forward with the housing market. I'm sure there's an opportunity there to to lower your um, your rates. Uh, that's all I've got. But you know, I'm just recapping what was said earlier. Um, we're gonna take our time on, on your super chat. You know, we don't want to rush it, so expect. You know, we'll probably tap in with you in the DMs as well. Um, what major city? Let's see if he tapped in. You know, you don't want to dox yourself. Just yeah, say you, you don't need to tell me like the exact street address. You know, I just need to know the general. Another city. Ninja Gini. You didn't have to do that part, but thank you, Tucker's Paladin, for the Ninja Gini. It says between VA Benny's and my job, um, just one hundred k. No problems, month to month. All right. So the good news is, don't lose your job. I guess just pay down your condo or your yeah, your mortgage. I mean, the thing is, I'm like geared towards something very different because I don't, I wouldn't buy a house or a condo because I want to buy a commercial property. Um, but between V, I don't even know what that is. VA Virginia? I don't even know. Right. Yeah. I'm guessing it's Virginia Benny's. Um, I, I don't know Benny's. Is I, that like, I, I we're going to need another uh, Ninja Gear <laughs> no, to clarify. No, no, no. no, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the yeah, important, man, which all right. we got to clarify. Yeah. But the important thing is, um, is crime going up in your neighborhood? That would be bad, right? Uh, and, and not like a moderate increase, because that always happens. I mean like a lot. Like we're talking, um, and I better keep it optical. Uh, basically, if you become, De if your city be neighborhood becomes Detroit, the dangerous parts of Detroit, or I think it's called Southside Chicago, where um, ahem, people kill each other all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to need to dump your condo uh, ASAP. Hey. Uh, Johnson, he says Veterans Affairs. That's what he specified as VA. Oh, Veterans Affairs. Hey, is it? Does, doesn't that mean he gets like a really good deal? Because I think he's got benefits. Yeah. <clears throat> Between veteran, oh, Veteran Affairs benefits. That's what Benny says. In my job, I'm pushing over 100k, no problems month to month. Okay. The VA gives you money for being service disabled. Okay. 
So the important thing, all right, so the, so the good news is you sound like you have good cash flow, right? Because the last thing you want is to fall behind those mortgage payments. Otherwise, the bank will just repossess or foreclose in your condo, and then you're, you're screwed. Number two, is your neighborhood still stable and decent? As long as it's stable and decent, and preferably the population increases, whether people have more kids and or more people come in. Uh, of course, interestingly enough, if you live in a, I guess, more Democrat area, they'll probably have open borders. So they'll be bringing in all these uh, legal and illegal <laughs> immigrants. Interestingly enough, that actually jacks up uh, real estate prices. So like what you're going to find as you make more money, as I already kind of figured it out, is you actually begin to understand why globalists actually do what they do, right? Like, I mean, yeah, they want power and yeah, they want to enslave everybody, but they also just want money. So because this is basically what happens. Um, like, for example, I'm living in my apartment now, and I moved here like, mm, I want to say about three years ago, I think, about. So I had to hire a real estate agent to help me find this apartment because my parents were in my face screaming at me. So one of the interesting things my real estate agent told me was, oh, yeah, you want to do commercial real estate someday, Jason? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, hit me up. And he told me some stuff about it. And he says, yeah, whenever you buy commercial real estate, you'll notice that there's only two classes of people that go to these uh, things. Uh, Hasidic Jewish people, the hardcore Jews with the black hats and black suits, and then Chinese investors from China. And I'm like, what? He says, yeah, because they have all the money, so they buy everything up. <laughs> and then, yep. And then, and then to jack up rents, what do you think they want to do? Open up the borders so that more people are paying rent. Um, so. So yes, uh, Tucker's Paladin. So if you could kind of take a look around like population growth um, and as long as crime doesn't go too crazy, right? Yeah, you'll probably be solid. Um, now remember, there is- Also, a... there's the matter, sorry, real quick, I was gonna tap in and say, there's the matter of, are you gonna rent it out to someone? You know, cause that obviously is passive income and that, that oh, yeah, takes care yeah. of that for- Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, but I'm gonna assume that you're living in the condo, Tucker, so so yeah you could rent it out but that means you have to find a different place to live so right uh so i guess yeah my metrics are bad on all of, oh uh see i mean i don't want you to tell us the exact neighborhood but i would definitely look well here's the thing there's you have to also be careful of cognitive bias because i assume we're all like conservative minded so we kind of tend mm -hmm. to be more uh paranoid i guess about stuff like this because i live in new york city and for whatever reason people think like everything's in chaos here in the city it's really not that bad right uh, right really, that's really a, i've noticed that too you know i live out in the sticks and anytime you know i don't like driving through the city and, and all that it's just too many people in general but i tend to think of it as oh don't go there it's it's bad whatever but anytime i'm hanging out with my friends uh in, in any of the major cities around here it's like yeah it's not that bad you, you can still walk through the streets like it's not it's not all this doom and gloom that people are pushing um but it's definitely somewhere in between you know not bad and, and the, yo Auti gifted five one month subscriptions thank you Auti. uh our, our little pog champ on the stream there our yeah, gamer yeah. Uh, making us proud. Thank you so much for gifting those, man. Appreciate it. Oh, follow that, man. Shout out follow this you. man. Make sure to give Ati a follow. That was dope. Um, but okay, so we were talking about real estate, commercial real estate. I'll I'll touch on land real quick because uh, I mentioned it earlier. So the land thing, um, it's not going to be as lucrative. You know, people aren't like out there looking to to rent land, but there's definitely commercial opportunities. Um, with you know companies like uh, AT and T and companies that rent out land to put cell towers on or buy it, but either way, you know if you do some surveying, uh, you could you could come across some opportunities like that. Whether it's good real estate, like a good location, whether it's got minerals, um, whether it's got resources that could be mined, you know stuff like that. Whether it could be used as farm farmland, there's a lot of ways to to make money on land without actually developing the raw land, and you don't need a license to do it. Which is why I looked into it in the first place, but you know, this is just knowledge I have. I have a uh, Google Docs sheet, by the way. If anyone's interested, tap in with me on uh, on on Twitter. Um, is there one more thing I was going to say about land? What was it? Uh, uh, cell phone tower, maybe build stuff on it. Cell phone tower. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, there's plenty of ways to make money um, selling land to like remote living types or to companies or you know whatever to lumber companies, something like that. Um, there's also the idea of arbitrage where, you know, 
you know something is worth more than what it's currently priced at, so you buy it at that price, you sell it at the higher price. So someone else mentioned it earlier. You can, they said take someone's house for free, and I forgot what the legal term for it was. Basically, like you know, seizing the house because they haven't made payments on it. I'm guessing, uh, which is something that you can do, and that might seem like predatory, but a lot of times these people can't afford to pay their taxes, and their house is about to go to auction. So when you come in and you make an offer to buy their land for very cheap and pay off their taxes. That's actually like a good thing for for some of these people. So, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, also, Mr. Okay, Mr. R. Uh, oh, sorry. If you're going to say something, uh, all right, I'll say yeah, about, real quick. But yeah. All right, we got a question from Tucker's Palette, and any general advice for a beginner to finance? Uh, uh, go ahead and tap hours, into our yeah. our Discord with 400 active users. We'll link you that. That's step one, and that's your like training wheels. This show is also the training wheels in a way, you know, meant to get you excited and interested about finance. Uh, obviously, we have other sources that you want to tap into if you're closely following the market and trading every day or whether you're investing in, in certain assets. By the way, thank you for gifting all those subscrip uh, subscriptions. Tucker's Paladin gifted five subscriptions. Big baller. That's those VA benefits, right? Yeah, um, just, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. But um, so you were going to say something, Jensen? Yeah. So well, actually, no, actually, we went so fast. There's a lot. But uh, you can also just make sure you watch my bit shoot videos, Tucker. Um, yeah. Which we'll call it. Actually, uh, I have to link that too. Um, or maybe someone else in the D live chat can just get it, get him the bit shoot link for my channel. Because what's actually, your channel's name? Because I know some, I know, I know some platforms just straight up don't let you post a bit shoot link. Yeah, so drop what's a your link name in on the there? chat. Okay. Well, if, if it if it lets you, but I'm saying just for people listening, uh, what oh, can yeah, they search bit on bit shoot. Com, yeah, bitshoot.com forward slash real Johnson chance. It's basically okay, I'm trying to make the same thing. Yeah. Same so, as your Twitter. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So, okay. So the bit shoot, uh, bit, bit shoot link works, and it's in the chat for anyone who needs it. Mr. B. Groper, thanks for the follow. You yeah. can go ahead. Yeah. So all right. So basically, well, um, I mean, well, I mean, we could talk for like several dozens of hours because I have like like what twenty years of experience with finance, but I'll try. It to sounds like you just need to you know tap in regularly. I think the people are are enjoying the show, and we're gonna want to have you back. You know, at your yeah. earliest convenience. That's what that sounds like. But go ahead. Yeah. So, so first thing, Tucker, and this goes for anybody, especially if you're just starting out. The first thing you have to think about is uh, something called cash flow. So this is, I actually got this from the Robert Kiyosaki Rich Dad Poor Dad books. So what you want to make sure is at every month you have more money coming in than you have going out. And yeah, he's uh, I did meet Robert Kiyosaki, but his bodyguard screamed at me, and then I was very upset about that. <laughs> but um, so the idea is not only do you want money coming in more than you have going out, you need to also make sure that money is also passive, meaning it's like regardless of what you do, you basically don't work for it. It's money that works for you. So for example, I have uh, like twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a stock called REML. It's a two X uh, mortgage REIT and it pays me dividends. I don't have to do anything for that income and I just get, you know, free money every three months. Well, actually I get every month, free money every month, but the big money is every three months. So real estate. That's is something that you uh, anyone who doesn't want to actively trade, look into passive income strategies. If you own a lot, and if you own enough shares of a stock, you'll be able to live off the dif dividends, so to speak, yeah. assuming they stay the same and, and don't, you know, get smaller. Um, but that's something to look into. And there's like, there's also passive income streams like renting out properties, things like that. Something you guys want to might want to look into if you're not involved every day in, in the markets. Um, real quick, uh, I tweeted out on my Twitter. Earlier today, I said, reply with stocks that will run on news of a Trump presidency. Uh, since you mentioned your dividend stock, I just wanted to read a few off. Um, and like I said, invest at your own risk and do your own research. This is people that replied to me on Twitter. Um, <clears throat> so real quick, the where was the one? Uh, QQQ, which let me look up real quick if I... Oh, that's like the... That's a 2x... Uh, index, right? 2x leverage something. It, it's Is it just uh, 2x leverage of the whole market or is that, am I thinking of something else? Uh, QQQ is either 2x spider index or 2x NASDAQ, but I've forgotten what, what direction. Well, let me look it up. Okay. Invest I think it's positive. I mean, it's looking like, it looks like what SPY looks like or, you know, what the index is. I think it's it's not inverse to it, but it's its goal is to, like, match the index, but twice 
you know, yeah. per day. Yeah, according to Google, it says QQQ is an ETF that includes 100 of the largest international and domestic companies listed on the NASDAQ. Uh, okay. Okay. So I think this is a so, 1x NASDAQ index ETF. Okay. Um, yeah. Real quick, what are your thoughts? I mean, we've got conflicting kind of ideas of what might happen on the news of a Trump win since the market's been pricing in Biden, from what we understand. Yeah. Um, I have to not believe that, but that's just my gut feeling. I could definitely be wrong. Well, I, could, I, I have a feeling I might be wrong. I don't know if it's as simple as everyone thinks Biden's going to win. Um, yeah, or, or if they're, go ahead. Oh no, uh, yeah, I was just gonna say that, like, I mean, here's the thing, like, the, yes, the Federal, I mean, oh yeah, Carr is not here, so he couldn't have, uh, but he basically mentioned it, right? Basically, the Federal Reserve and all that money printing and all the globalists, basically, the money printing plus the globalists yep. sucking all the wealth from the middle class is going into these, you know, big corporations. So that's basically what's driving the markets. Um, second. I think a lot of investors that they might actually think that Trump might actually win, and they're still basically going to price that in. Like, and that, that and that's where I happen to be different from everyone else because everyone thinks it's a Biden. Everything's the market's pricing in Biden. I don't think they're pricing in Biden. But again, I could still be wrong. And number two, if Trump wins, I know tech stocks will have a, especially Google, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, and. Oh yeah, I, I, oh Apple. Basically, all the ones that are gonna get hit with an antitrust lawsuits, they can actually get you know, uh, you know, uh, fucked in the ass because you know we're obviously gonna go after them. So right, Trump is the only one that would even consider going after those companies. It's not even that he's gonna for sure, but if there was a person to consider doing that, it would be Trump. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he yeah, you see how can you can you imagine like Nick Fuentes says? Can you imagine how incredibly pissed off Trump is, but at Twitter especially with all that censorship? Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Which is why I think they're going all out right now and kind of you know expending all their ammunition. Yeah, with, because yeah, Trump doesn't have a choice. Like, I mean, I don't know how many of you um ahem, read the Daily Wire dot su run by the the wonderful folks of Andrew uh, Andrew uh, Wang and Andrew Clavin. Um, they uh yeah, he, I actually happen to agree what what he basically what the staff there says. Like if Trump loses this election, right? They're gonna put him in jail. They're gonna take all away his assets, and they're gonna come after all of us, right? Maybe Jared Kushner and Ivanka might get you know some uh, some reprieve. Tapped into .su. Yep, exactly. I've actually been following the Daily Wire .su since uh, I want to say 2015. So I I was tapped in before I even knew there was a thing such as tapping in. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, but, uh, I, I lost my train. Oh, of by the way, I lost my train. Real of quick. Thought, but... I'll give you, a, give you a second to think. Um, mm -hmm. our boy, $1 extreme coming through with the source. I'll drop the link in chat again, since it's so far back, but the federal register does in fact state the, there's a, uh, something that's been brought to their attention, the manner of federal executions. Um, and I can read this, but, you know, that's the source if you guys want it. There's a docket number for the DOJ. I don't know if that's, you know, something that's pertinent or not. But uh, it's real, man. Men are federal, federal executions. And I don't know what the follow-up on it, but it really was introduced today in the Federal Register. And uh, it's all real. So <clears throat> do we want to, by the way, we touched on, you know, what stocks would run. We briefly touched on it. There was a few other mentions, some really funny guys in the comments linking uh, penny stocks and, and XTRM. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm guilty of linking a penny stock, but it's it's a little different. You know, it's this one's 80 cents, so it's it's really a cream, cream of the crop when it comes to penny stocks. But anyway, the one I mentioned was NAK. It's currently just getting uh, completely beat down with uh, news of the Biden presidency and how that's really bad for it. So I'm just waiting. I'm buying the rumor and selling the news. It's not, you know, this isn't like, a surefire play, but this is something that I'm playing. It also dipped a lot today, so I picked up some shares, um, and I'll just I'll just play that and take profits and sell whenever I'm content. Definitely not going to be caught bag holding. Hey, um, Johnson, we had a donation in form of a diamond. Yeah. Have you answered this? I, I wasn't tapped in. Uh, what do you look for in a commercial property? I definitely did not answer that. Um, actually, I didn't even know that was a question. 
Uh, so, for, for, so first off, I've never actually bought any real estate. I just simply have been studying this for a long time. And the only thing I have missing left is obviously the most important part, which is the money. So as I was telling Tucker's Paladin before, the first thing you have to do is always the first rule of real estate. Location, location, location. So is the neighborhood good? Um, you know, is the population growth decent? Um, when I say good, you know, it's kind of clean. It's definitely safe. Safety is obviously the most important part. And, you know, if there's population growth, meaning, you know, babies and people moving in, then that basically means you'll be able to rent out your apartments. So that's the basic, like, that's the, that's the basic idea behind uh, real estate. And when you're having commercial real estate, there's different types. You have shopping malls, like movie theaters, and then, of course, apartment buildings. Since, you know, I'm obviously doing this for the first time, I'm going to do apartment buildings because, obviously, I live in an apartment. My parents own a house, and there's, like, it has a total of three units or three apartments. So I'm already kind of familiar with, you know, basically what I'm buying. So, uh, and then after that, if everything looks good, that's just a matter of price, right? And then, uh, and then from what I can tell, uh, banks now require anywhere from 20 to 40% down because they, uh, because they're still, they're still pretty, uh, paranoid about the 2008 crash. So they don't want to like start lending money to people who can't pay back the loan. So, I mean, I don't know. I won't know until I sell my crypto probably at least next year. Or if I have enough balls of steel, I'll try to gamble and wait maybe a year and a half and try to sell for more. And then whatever money I have, you know, let's say I make, I don't know, $2 million. Then that means I can buy an apartment building that's worth, uh, I don't know, say $8 million. So... Because because you know you put twenty five percent down, you take out seventy five percent of the mortgage, and then well, I guess the interest rates for me will probably be around four or five percent maybe, um, and then I'm get I I'm, I will have to go on loopnet.com to that's the that's the that's the site I'm going to be using to buy uh, to look up commercial real estate to buy, uh, but I don't know I could I could I could definitely make twenty thirty forty grand a month net profit you know off the rent uh off a fully rented commercial property um but again i'm moving to tampa so this number is going to change and all this other stuff uh, um yeah i didn't realize what time it is by the way um we've been going for an hour man that's that's crazy i feel like we've covered a lot um yeah we are I do right. have some uh, well i'm thinking we're going to need to have you back on the show quite frankly i hope you don't mind that yeah, I mean, you um, only do. Perfect. How often do you do the show? Like once a week. It's Wednesdays and Sundays, but as of late, man, we've been so tapped in. It's like we do a show almost every night. Um, as soon as some news comes right. out, which, by the way, let me just read this real quick. Um, this is just a tweet, not really news. It says General Flynn full pardon just hours before Sidney Powell is rumored to file her bombshell lawsuit. Uh, coincidence? Question mark. And no, it's not a coincidence. But I just want to bring that up and um, you know get the brain jogging about that. Yeah. A lot has happened today. I, you know, I wish we could cover more. I've got some people coming over actually in a little bit. I, I didn't expect this to go on this long, um, but we're definitely going to have to tap back in on this. Uh, oh, do you, yeah. do we want to talk about like do we do we know what crypto is going to do with the Trump win? Um, uh, well, I can answer that, but I should ask how much time do we have left? Um, well, I personally have to tap out in just a few minutes. Actually, I didn't realize it was already nine o'clock. A few um, minutes. Oh, okay. So I guess that means the show's going to end. Well, I, well, by all means, Zen Ruko's still here, and people are still asking questions. Um, oh, yeah, we could probably continue know. the show, I guess, without you. Cause... I can keep it tapped in, too, Mr. R. Steel Puma, I trust Steel Puma to keep the show tapped in. I, I'm sorry, guys. I kind of uh, didn't expect this to go on long. But, yeah, no, definitely keep the show going. Look, yeah, Mr. R's going to tap going, out, but that, can, that doesn't so. mean the, uh, the show is over. We still got 200 people tapped in and, and asking questions. So I don't want to end the stream early. Um, but yeah, while while I'm gone, I will be, uh, you know, re recapping the stream and kind of posting what we've learned. I'm sure there will be more. I'll, I'll watch the replay. You guys should all watch the replay. Um, so I guess Mr. R has to tap out. But uh, thank you for joining us, you, buddy. Jensen. Yeah. And we're definitely going to have you back on. Uh, give him a follow on Twitter at Real Jun Jun Sun, uh, Chan, and also on BitChute. So 
Apologies for not keeping track of the time, guys. Um, Mr. R had a little little brain dead moment, but um, we'll we'll pick this back up. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks again, man. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm actually really happy to be here. Absolutely. I wish I wish I was a little more a uh, little more better with the time management, but uh, yeah. first time ever on air, Mr. R is going to be the first to uh, to tap out. Um, so here, get ready for it, guys. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, stay tuned in to hear June soon answer your questions. Make sure to drop lemons and diamonds, plenty of those, yeah. and make sure to hit a follow if you haven't hit follow already. Um, so I'll, I'll tap out. Thank you, Junson. I'll make sure to tap in with you shortly, and uh, everyone have a great night. Okay. All right. Later, Mr. R. Cheers. Yeah. So we can uh, we can keep this going for a little bit longer if you want. So, oh, yeah, for sure. Puma Safari. I think you followed me on Twitter. Um, so yeah, just maybe shift over to the market a little bit. Kind of what a lot of us have been talking about is plan on market volatility. I know we have yeah. some calls and uh, shares of BXX. What are kind of your thoughts? I mean, you kind of touched on the market you think is already adjusting for a Trump presidency. So we were thinking volatility. If Trump won, then it would probably swing down a bit. What are kind of your thoughts on that? Uh, if Trump is confirmed the winner, I'm pretty sure that the NASDAQ is definitely going to take a nosedive because – Facebook, uh, Twitter, what's the other one? Google and Apple. Oh, I forgot the other one. Amazon, of course. Amazon. Basically, all of big tech stocks. They're definitely going to take a pounding. Because I've actually seen this before throughout the year. Whenever there's like antitrust uh, fears, and then like, all their stocks go down. But then, of course, they bounce back up because they find that oh yeah, nothing's happening. Well, a second Trump turn, a second Trump term will definitely uh, cause a lot of nervousness. So I guess if you're trading the VIX, right, then uh, yeah, you could probably yeah, make VIX. some deep, because that thing makes more money the more prices go up and down violently, right? Especially in magnitude. So yeah, that, yeah so that's what will happen. I mean, hell, maybe I should buy some VIX, but I mean, I'm already yeah, I mean, I have tapped out on money. I'm tapped yeah, into BXX uh, bigly. For sure, because um, yeah, it's holding inevitable. Some shares, and then um, yeah, some calls for like January, February. So I think it'll definitely. I mean, yeah, probably hit any, at least forty, fifty. Yeah, definitely the beginning of December because I've got the volatility will start beginning on the, uh, up until December fourteenth because everyone's going to be wondering, okay, this is the real deal. What are the electors going to do, right, to determine the president? And then of course, January twentieth, and then of course the chaos that will happen, no matter who gets in there uh afterwards though i guess maybe like if i happen to be wrong about the markets going up because of trump then biden wins then i guess everything just goes straight up right but i mean i i don't know i mean parallel is i'm also kind of biased obviously because i want trump to win and also i don't uh, yeah i also don't actually trade the stock market so make sure you guys keep that in mind because i trade cryptos and i specifically have a uh, make uh, make cash flow today so that I can buy up assets so I can sell it in the one year from now because I'm more of a I guess medium to long term trader. Um, gotcha. And then, yeah, and I wanted to take it back to the Trump bets for a minute, and we kind of touched on that. Oh yeah, um, we went. Right, I've been yeah, we went about, so uh, fast. We, I'm gonna, I've put about I put about twelve grand on it so far, uh, close oh, to thirteen, wow. and yeah, kind of what I'm think. I have most of the really good ones maxed out. What I was thinking about doing is playing some of those margins. I know right now, like the the Biden electoral by like twenty uh, thirty to fifty nine is about like three or four cents. So I picked up like fifteen hundred shares of that, and I said a sell order for like thirty cents because I feel like as soon as Trump flips a state, all those lower margins are going to shoot for uh, Joe Biden. It's a, I feel like a good way to pick up some more money to pump into safer bets. What are your thoughts? Let's see. So what was it called? Because uh, a lot, because I noticed that a lot of these markets on predicted, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you went on predicted, you can go to the electoral college margin of victory. I mean, I know the Trump by thirty to, or I think it's thirty to sixty, and then sixty to ninety nine, or both, under right. five cents. So you could you could definitely load those up. Oh yeah. So I see a big one. Dems by sixty to ninety nine. Okay, and yeah. that's the one. And you're then the in. one. Well, I did the one right below it because that's that's the one that's super cheap, and I feel like as soon as Trump flips the state, that one's going to shoot. So I, I have a sell order on it for like thirty, fifty cents. So I make a profit on that, pumping into actual Trump bets because I think he'll win. 
Yeah, let me see. See the, the see the thing is the margin one always confuses me. I gotta make sure I interpret this correctly. What will be the electoral college margin in the twenty twenty? So that means Joe Biden will have. So this basically means Joe Biden will people think he will win by sixty to ninety nine electoral votes compared to Trump. Yeah. So I mean that's why I think the lower Biden is a really good play for that cheap. Yeah. You so swing for, it as soon as Trump. Yeah, so if we assume that Trump's going to win, then you want to do Dems by 60-99 and buy the no. And right now that's 12 to 13 cents. Well, what I did was even I, – I bought the yes on Dems by um, I think it's 30 to 59. And then I set a sell order on it because as soon as Trump flips his state, that one's going to shoot up. And then I can make a profit on that and just put it into Trump bets. Oh, that's actually pretty smart. Because people are going to be panicking, but then they'll still have like they'll still be in kind of denial, yeah exactly. Right? And I I would do some of that for some of the state margins as well. As soon as these recounts come in, you know I mean you can make twenty, thirty, a hundred percent on some of these bets, and then just push it in. So you're not investing you know fresh capital into it. That's probably uh, too much risk for me. Um, so wait, you said well state I mean margins. you can you can set a you can set a sell order on it as well. So I mean. Yeah, I can guarantee it's going to shoot to thirty cents when Trump flips flips Pennsylvania. I yeah. make you know that is true. I well, actually I don't think I could I can't I can do that anymore because I'm already maxed out on uh, a lot of the state margins. Uh, let's see which ones did I? Uh, is it well, you can max out each individual margin. Oh really? I thought it was the whole thing because I keep getting the error message. You've already bought the no. Max it's eight. yeah. It's per it's per margin. You can do eight fifty. Oh, okay. So let's take, for example, uh, Pennsylvania presidential vote margin, All right? I have, let's see, I have Biden by 75K to 90K, and I bought the no on that. And then I have Trump by 15K or more, and I bought the yes on that. But they're not maxed at 850 each is. So basically yeah, I can so buy you can 850 in each of those. Oh, sorry, go ahead. And then, I mean, and you, you can do 850 per, and, like, even if you didn't want to, you know, swing the Biden bets, you can easily pick up the Trump Electoral College for, like, four or five cents for whichever one you think is more likely. So I put a decent amount in both the, uh, I think it was 30 to 59, and then the 60 to 99, because Trump, if he wins, it's going to be in either one of those, and yeah, for four I mean, cents a pop. Yeah, definitely has to pass by these numbers before it goes to its actual Electoral College margin. Yeah, so I'll make profit on everyone leading up to the one he actually makes it on because I set a sell order, and like people are not going to know exactly. Yeah, here's the thing though. Like it, uh, let me see. Yeah, here's the thing though. Like I thought I wasn't allowed to buy it because it says the maximum number of traders have already you know used this contract kind of thing. Uh, so, I mean, if that if that's the case, I guess I bought those pretty early. So. Yeah, because like I actually, because because this market electoral college margin of victory, this thing has one hundred forty eight point three million shares. I I'm already locked out, meaning I couldn't buy any shares in like some uh, markets that were as, as low as like twelve to twenty million. And I'm like, what, what, what the hell? So yeah, I mean um, that that same thing happened to me like on election day, which I'm pretty glad it happened. I couldn't buy into a lot of these bets. I almost I was trying to buy um, no female VP for like thirty nine cents. Oh, I are, yeah, I bought that. I actually did buy it. Oh, wait, that you said in 2016? Well, I was saying on election night, um, the uh, no female VP was maxed at, or was sitting at like 35 to 39 cents. But they were out of contract, so I couldn't buy on that, which I'm glad I didn't, because otherwise I'd be holding a big bag right now. <laughs> yeah, because that's kind of weird, because I actually happened to be in the woman VP in 2020 market, but I bought the no on that. Yeah, so I got the I bought the no on that as well, and I think I got it for like thirteen cents. Yeah. But on election night of twenty twenty, it was about thirty five cents. Oh, that's because oh yeah, because people are probably just believing all the fake news terrorism like CNN and and the MSNBC and all that. That's probably that's probably why. Oh, and then Trump con uh, contests the election, and then of course the price drops. Okay, I understand now. I understand. Oh, so yeah. yeah you so did what I party. was, yeah. What would have been smart would have been um, buy Trump election night, set a sell order for like eighty cents, and then set a buy order for like Biden at twenty, then ride Biden back up, sell that buy Trump low again. But I mean, who could have foreseen exactly how long this would go out? Yeah, I. I mean, in fact, I didn't actually even 
the, like I knew something shady would happen, but I never actually anticipated it would actually just outright steal the election. So like, there's no way I would, like anyone would have known to do that, right? Unless you knew you were going to try to steal the election. Then, then in that case, yeah. you have inspired. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested to see how many people involved in the fraud actually made bets as well. Yeah, yeah. I just hope they don't uh, take Predictic down if that really is the case, because you know we, we we need our money, right? I already have yeah, fifteen hundred so, I mean, bucks waiting actually, for me. <laughs> at this point, I have like enough of the states or those triple plays, or even just Trump winning, to where he only needs to win one state, and I'll make my initial like twelve thousand. Yeah, back. that thing is like, so, yeah, that is like the best bet, but I couldn't buy because it it's already tapped out. Like they have the max traders, um, but the Arizona yeah, I tapped in pretty early, so yeah, like the Arizona trio is really good on because we already have the hearings. Yeah, for it's that. cheap too. Yeah, it's cheap. You have the Arizona hearings, um, and then the other one, and then Nick Fuentes is and going even if, there too. And even if he doesn't flip Arizona, which I think he will, I mean that bet also includes Georgia and Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, big one is Pennsylvania. So your you, your chances of making money are extremely good. That's why I wanted to buy it, but I couldn't. So now I'm in. Yeah, the I maxed. I maxed Pennsylvania Democrat no at like ten cents, and then I think I got like three hundred on. Uh, like Trump by fifteen thousand. Yeah, that sounds right because that's the metric they're using on the other markets too. Yeah, so that's a pretty solid bet, I think. Like, I mean, that's what I would have bought. I personally I think that I think Trump's clearest path to victory is going to be the Rust Belt, or maybe like, maybe he doesn't win Wisconsin or Michigan, but he's going to pick up Georgia. Like, I don't think he really needs Arizona, and realistically, I mean, I think Nevada is actually looking pretty good for like ten cents. Yeah, it's kind of insane. Uh, you're referring to will Trump win Michigan, Wisconsin, or Nevada, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually the market I was able to actually buy. So that one's right now at, um, let's see, I bought that at an average of $0.09, cents, and right now it says the latest $0.16, cents, so I'm up like 680 bucks, unrealized. Right. Uh, but... Oh, I mean, we, we covered so much, but there's a... Michigan is holding a hearing on December... First or November thirtieth, right after the other place, which is Arizona, and they're gonna have this exact same hearing that w that Pennsylvania had today. And from what yeah, I can, as, yeah. as, uh, as yeah. soon as he flips one state, I think it's gonna kind of set the precedent for other ones. Like, yes. I feel like if he gets one, he's gonna get them all. Yes, exactly. Because Nick Fuentes actually tweeted earlier, and I retweeted that. Um, let me get the exact quote. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. Jack Pasoic says, breaking, Twitter suspended Doug Mush... He, oh, wow, they actually suspended this Pennsylvania state senator. Like, Twitter is obviously really... Oh, that's horrible. Actually, yeah, I mean, I feel like Twitter knows that after all they've done, I mean, literally every tweet, you can't even like it without them giving you a warning. Like, he's yeah. definitely coming hard down on big tech. Yeah, this is definitely... This has to be criminal. You can't be doing this. They're actually interfering with our election process. Like I, I actually think people on Twitter must be complicit in this election fraud. Like we're, we're talking criminal stuff. Luckily, that executive order—I don't know if you were here earlier—but that executive order from 2018 that Trump passed, he definitely will definitely have to use that to start uh, arresting these people at big tech. Um, but yeah, uh, hundred percent. But yeah, Jason, uh, I appreciate having you on, man. I think we'll probably have to tap out pretty soon. Nick's gone live at this point, so. A lot of our viewers probably getting over there, but oh yeah, because they want to <laughs> watch Nick. Yeah, I see. Probably that. tap into that, but uh, yeah, man, appreciate you being on here, man. Uh, tapping in with mm -hmm. us, definitely. Hopefully, make you a little bit more regular uh, guest of the show. Oh yeah, all the sure. all the fans were definitely loving it, man. FCC rule making on Section Two Thirty protection December. Yeah, so we, yeah, it's gonna be really lit. So oh boy, um, but yeah, there are, there will be plenty to talk about in the coming weeks. That's for sure. Yep. Um, so what's the next time you're doing the show? Like Sunday? Um, yes, we do shows uh, normally Wednesdays and Sundays, uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, but uh, are, are you tapping out, Steel Puma? Yeah, I'll be tapping out. Uh, if you want to stay on, Jason, no worries. Man, I'm sure I was in. Ruko will stay on for a little bit. We'll, we'll probably out. end the show because we're hitting the two-hour mark and everyone's going to go watch mm -hmm. AF. So uh, we'll probably yeah. do the outro rather soon. Thanks a lot, Steel Puma, for uh, hosting. Yeah. And Mr. R's place, I really appreciate that. 
Yep. Peace. Later, man. All right. Later, Puma. So, um, Mr. J, while you're still here, we yeah. still have over 100 people tapped in and whatnot. Yeah. I'm just going to double check the uh, the donos, make sure there aren't any questions. Oh, yeah. uh, Long Island Refugee says tap into SPCE. Mm -hmm. uh, not very familiar with that one. Have you heard of that? Uh, that sounds like a stock, and no, I've never heard of that. But as I said, I don't really trade... Uh, a lot of stocks normally. I buy like very specific financial stocks. I true, have a, true. I have a question if you don't mind. Um, okay. Yeah. But um, so since XRP is kind of um, been taken off recently, do you think it's going to go back down to like thirty cents, or you think it's going to like break off to like well, it's sixty cents to a dollar? It's definitely not going back down to thirty cents. Like that's because uh, all like. Like big, it's like the like when Bitcoin or goes up, all the other uh, altcoins go up too. You know, rising tide uh, floats all boats essentially. Uh, as for the skyrocketing, um, I know it's going to go up, but uh, like the, the current bull run is pretty much here, so everything's just going to go up. Like not just XRP, but Bitcoin, Litecoin, pretty much everything, mm -hmm. or at least all the majors. How much it goes up, I actually can't make that determination because I don't know how big that Bank of America contract is uh, that they, that Ripple has done because they're not saying anything, which would imply it must be an insane amount of money. They must be waiting for the election results to come out. They probably, you know. Uh, that could be it, too. Adjust it uh, a little bit, you know. I mean, it, could, it, it definitely could be that. Uh, Bank of America is definitely no friend of... Trump, I think. Um, I mean, most. I mean, most big corporations don't like Trump or America First. So. Oh yeah. So uh, that, that's what uh, that's what happens. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, but for the most part, uh, I'm actually just buying XRP because apparently on December 12th they're going to have a utility fork that will uh, generate um, almost at one to one a thing you know, like a flare or spark token. So basically, I just want to just get extra cryptocurrency for free. You know, buy one, get two. It's like a free. Spark token. It's like a. Can I explain that? I actually have no idea, but um, <laughs> I, I just know that it's a fork. And in the past, like whenever you have cryptocurrency forks, like you basically double your money uh, instantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's why I'm doing it. Um, so basically, just buy a bunch of XRP, and then you have to put it in a wallet that will. Uh, be involved in the snapshot on December 12th so that like you can get your credit for it but you can just hmm. use um, actually I'm going to type in the name of the thing in the comments I think it's probit.com let me make sure I get that uh, uh, no yes probit.com so basically uh, probit is a apparently they're a South Korean exchange cryptocurrency exchange but they said they will approve of uh, the XRP utility fork. So you just simply put your coins in there, and then they'll just handle the the fork for you and just credit you your your Spark tokens or Flare tokens oh, or whatever. Interesting. Yeah, and then just do that. Um, which is why a lot of people, in addition to the Bank of America news, has just been buy buying XRP like crazy. It's it's like crazy. Yeah, I was been like bag holding it for like three months because I was just like it was so cheap, and now it's like. Uh, As of like three days ago, it just popped off. I was like, "Oh shit!" So, well, you're fortunate. I had to wait since uh, two th January 2018 when the when the cryptocurrency crash occurred. Damn! So I've been waiting two years for 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 today's moment to come, and it was supposed to happen earlier <laughs> this year, but then stupid COVID happened, and then they did the stupid lockdowns, and then uh, yeah, ah, uh, they decided to delay and cuck me some more. But uh, you know, that's just how it goes. Yeah, that's just that's just what the market does. The yeah, we all yeah we all know why. Yeah, but either way, cryptocurrency will be fine. Uh, stock markets will eventually be fine, but it's definitely going to be more volatile because it's hard to really tell if a Trump win or a Biden win what effect that will have. Excuse me. On um. Uh, on the stocks because that will have definitely a big impact but what i do know is if trump is looking very strongly like he's actually going to be the president i might actually look into buying uh put options into tech stocks so 
Microsoft, mm. Amazon, Twitter. Uh, what's the other one? Facebook. Like Fangs, kind of. Yeah, Fang, right? So, um, yeah, because it's definitely going to have, like, I mean, the thing is, I don't usually do something like that. So, I mean, I don't know how much money I could even potentially make off of something uh, yeah. like that. But I don't know. Puts it kind of hard to, puts it kind of hard to, you know, gauge like that. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd have to think about it. Any thoughts yeah, on ICX? Water Groiper donates one diamond. How much is a diamond even worth? Oh, why you donate? It's, like, it's, a it's about a dollar, dollar twenty, I believe, because uh, each lemon is point zero one two. Ah. Oh, okay. So it's a dollar twenty, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty, yeah, that's a that's a decent amount, especially if you get like a lot of them. Um, I have no oh, idea yeah. what ICX is, unfortunately, so I can't answer that question. But if it's a cryptocurrency and it's in the top 50 to 100, you just use the same... Like, I have a very simple investing and finance rule set. If, uh, if, if you... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit? If, if, if you'll notice. So, yeah, I mean, it'll probably just go up like everything else. Like, I look at the macro level of things. Like, if the entire market is doing well, then everything generally does very well. Right? As long as it's not like an outright scam. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. But, you know, again, I'm looking to maybe dump crypto maybe in one year or so. Like, like there's just so many variables. And then also, I have to know what the price of Bitcoin is at that point in time. Like, if, if Bitcoin hits, like, 250 to 500 grand, uh, Citibank estimates that December 2021, Bitcoin will be about 318,000. You know, I thought I actually thought it was gonna be five hundred grand because I did a oh. prediction video about it last April. April. Bitcoin's gonna explode that much. In, yeah. Like, was that December twenty twenty one or is that by De- you know, like, December twenty twenty one? Yeah. Because there's. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. So if on. Bitcoin's worth that much, you can imagine what's gonna happen with, uh, you know, all the other cryptos, right? Mm-hmm. Again, rising tide yeah, floats all exactly. boats. That's that's where because. Oh yeah, because a lot of you don't know my background, right? So I made a six fig. I took five hundred dollars on November sixteenth, two thousand sixteen, right? Eight days after you know our glorious God Emperor Trump won the election, and <laughs> yes. I bought an obscure altcoin to start doing proof of stake mining, and I turned that into f- six figures. I'm not going to mention it because it's a lot of money, right? I'm going to wait till after. Yeah, I- yeah sell off all my crypto in this bull run then i'll reveal the number only one person this other person i've told actually knows the real number so it's it's going to be the same thing uh because 500 dollars turns into six figures and then if you really want to know how much i was making like you could try to dig around youtube and find my old bitcoin cloud world videos now my best week was twenty five thousand dollars just selling proof of stake coins that i was minting or generating out of thin air and just selling on the open market. So that's basically what's going to happen this bull run. So, and then I use Google Trends to, to compare normie interest in Bitcoin searches compared to the 2017 peak. Um, and I actually always start my BitChute videos looking at that Google Trends chart. <clears throat> so, um, Let's see, I'm going to go off memory, but basically, Bitcoin searches for this week was 22, but compared to 2017 at the peak, it was that's at 100. So basically, Bitcoin search interest by normies, as measured by Google, um, is, all, is, is still down like 80%, but the price of Bitcoin is almost at the 2017 mark. So there's clearly a big mismatch. So that tells me that this bull run will still be the biggest thing ever. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing with Google Trends. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you're you're already tapped in Water Griper. So um, but uh, but the what makes this situation a little different is yes, Trump second term, the globalists are going crazy, and I honestly do not know how long this bull run will last. Typically, it lasts nine to eleven months, is what the cryptocurrency bull runs do. And in the past, Bitcoin has always gone up like several tens of thousands of percent. So, uh, sorry, I almost lose my voice, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to just take it. Um, I mean, in my case, I just take it once every week. That's why I do my videos to keep tabs on everything. 
Hmm. Hey, Jason, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, do you think Bitcoin is like sustainable for, let's say, like the next 10 years? Next 10 years? What do you mean? Oh, Harrison of Texas? Is that you? Uh, uh, can you say that one more time? I, I didn't hear you. Oh, I was going to say, are you Harrison of Texas? Because I know a Harrison on, of Texas on Twitter. No, no, I live in Nashville, unfortunately. Uh, oh, you're a different Harrison, okay. Uh, can you be more, a little more, like, because it's a little too vague, like, Bitcoin tenure is what? Yeah, I, so, like, I, right now, what I'm doing is that I have two different uh, portfolios that I'm working on. I have one where I do stocks, and I have one where I'm trying to be my own, like, Federal Reserve, where I own, like, gold, silver, and oil. So... If you were like a financial advisor um, and you wanted to like convince me to buy uh, more like Bitcoin or crypto, um, like how would you do that? Because right now I'm still very skeptical, oh, um, okay. especially since like the Federal Reserve is like kind of against it. But I, I definitely want to add it to my portfolio. Oh, OK. Uh, well, first, um, the Federal Reserve is kind of... Well, believe it or not, the Federal Reserve is actually not that hostile towards um, cryptocurrency. I can't remember the names, but what was the... It's an, it's an older white guy that's in charge of the SEC. I think that's it. Um, that guy is skeptical of Bitcoin. However, he's actually kind of started slowly turning around to the idea of cryptocurrency in general. Like He actually said the Federal Reserve uh, is actually looking into... Which is weird because he actually is part of the SEC, but basically the whole mo the the central bank of America, ugh, central bank of America, the Fed, has said they are exploring a uh, national digital currency. I just call it America Coin, right? Because all because a bunch of other countries in the world are also issuing their own national digital coins. France is looking into it. Um, Portugal is definitely pro Bitcoin, and they're definitely uh, fast tracking their Portugal coin. Canada is into it. A bunch of other countries are and china coin is already out they've already done a test pilot run so china officially has the world's first na uh, national digital cryptocurrency um so i say in my bitcoin bit videos this is good because what happens is now there's going to be a global competition it's like well china's got china coin well we got to have french coin and then germany they're like no we need eu coin and then america's like okay everyone's ahead of us like where's america coin so there's going to be like this huge frenzy of, for like cryptocurrency and people are going like, like, wow, what is this current cryptocurrency stuff? Like, is it Bitcoin? Is it America? Coin? Like, I don't understand. Like, I need to get into it. And then basically fear of missing out, right? FOMO and buying frenzy, you know, starts uh, kicking in. So, so these are very, these are very bullish signs. Um, so if, if you remember like the, when the internet was in its early stage, stages in the nineties, it's pretty much the exact same thing here. Um, so, so that's the fundamentals. And then basically I would probably just tell you, you can buy Bitcoin now, or actually I would probably tell you to buy like XRP or Litecoin because those are a lot cheaper and they have a much better chance of, you know, giving you several thousands of percent and then just dump, like basically I would just tell you to do what I'm doing, just buy it now and then just sell it when like you might think uh, the, bull, the bull run will, um, you know, basically crash. So, but if you want to hold it like five, 10 years, technically that'll work, but you're going to really be missing out on a lot of profits because it's definitely going to go up a lot and then crash a lot and then go up a lot and then crash a lot. So like, I, like, I don't like that. So I'd rather just, you know, <laughs> uh, sell before the bull run crashes and then buy when everything uh, has crashed, you know, like when coronavirus. Yeah. Like, I, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll I did the exact same thing with Light. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I did the exact same thing with Litecoin. Um, yeah. That's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I bought it when it was at like 30, 40 bucks, and then oh, I nice. immediately sold it with like the massive surge that happened like a month ago. But like, I'm I'm very like, it's a portfolio that like I I only use to build. I never sell. So like, Ooh. it's so strange for me to have so much. Um, uh so much volatility in it yeah that's yeah that that one is going to be hard because right now cryptocurrency is not designed to be held 
uh, basically long term and never be sold. Um, at least not yet. Maybe you wait like 10, 20, 30, 40 years, I guess. Um, but uh, whatchamacallit. I mean, you're going to have a lot of volatility in that. And then, I don't know, like that's, uh, I mean, that's going to be a judgment call for you, but that's something I wouldn't do. Um, but that's because I know that now is different. Like you can actually predict when crypto is going to go up and then you can sell it and then it'll crash and then you buy it again and then it goes back up, sell before the top and then crash and then rinse and repeat. So um, obviously uh, it, it's going to be a little tough. Uh, to take that kind of vehicle and then put it into, uh, you know, um, wh whatever it is you want to hold it and then never sell it kind of vehicle. And then you know, you're going to have like, eh. like, I mean, I don't know, like, am I making any sense or? No, no, that, that definitely answered my question. Um, yeah, because yeah. I'm thinking about, I was thinking about having, um, I've got like two separate bro uh, brokers accounts. And one of them is like uh, I've got very low like liquidity, like I I, I can't w withdraw anything from, you know. So um, I was like thinking a, about using that one to buy crypto, but like I guess I should probably keep it up with like my. That? You what? Is the thing is the investment vehicle you're using like an IRA or some kind of thing like that? Yeah, it's uh, through uh, – my parents gave me a lot of money through a trust fund. Oh, okay. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm not able to withdraw it. However, I'm able to invest it or I'm able to use it for education. So, um, when yeah, can it you, definitely makes When more can sense you withdraw to... or sell things with that? Like, do you know the – Yeah, it, it's all about taxes because technically, like – so through that account, I'm not able to withdraw until, like, a certain age. Oh man, is it like sixty five or something? Yeah, they pretty much set it up to where it's like retired. Oh, but I'm man. able to use it like a uh, what is it called a five hundred nine b or whatever it is. Where I, I like right now, I'm getting my master's for free. Like okay. I can do that with it. However, like I can't like actually withdraw it until like I'm much older. Hmm. Well, if I draw upon like my old real estate training that from the learning annex from a long time ago. And funny enough, Trump actually went to that learning annex seminar too. That's why I went to that. He was actually a really good speaker back then too. Um, I did learn that he, he, I did learn that there is a specific type of IRA. It might've been the Roth IRA. Cause I, cause I don't know the specifics of your IRA or if it, or if it's even called an IRA, but you can't withdraw it, but you can't, because I think you just said you can't invest it. So you can use that to buy something, like let's say real estate. So you can't sell the real estate property, I think, but you still are able to collect the rent checks from that. So it's kind of like a legal loophole. As for cryptocurrency, unfortunately you can't do that because obviously the cryptocurrency just stays in your account. So it's no different mm -hmm. than say buying gold and silver and putting that in your IRA kind of thing. Because people do actually do that, especially boomers. Um, so, uh, like you'll probably do fine, but um, there's probably other better ways to uh, do it. I mean, in fact, I might even look into what the tax penalty is and maybe just pay it if you want to withdraw the money and just pay the tax penalty. But I don't know what the percent penalty of that is going to be for you. That is if you're willing to do what I basically suggest, which is buy now and then in maybe like a year or so, just dump it, All right? Oh, my eyes. You can use your first... Yeah, uh, yeah, no, that definitely helps out a ton. Um, yeah, so definitely thanks, Jason. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, um... Do, do we have any more questions yeah. for Jensen while he's still here? Anyone? I mean, aside from the chat, I don't think there's anything more. All right, well, I guess we'll just go ahead and call it because uh, I believe you are a busy man, so we will go ahead and leave you be for the night. And uh, thank you so much for coming on to the show. You've been a very, uh, very helpful person in, in terms of uh, being a well of uh, uh, information and whatnot. We really appreciate it and uh, your input on people's investment strategies and whatnot, not only in regards to crypto, but also just investments in general. 
regarding uh, real estate and whatnot. So we really appreciate your input. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely happy to help, and uh, I was definitely very happy to be here. So, uh, yeah, I definitely do want to come back. Um, I think maybe Sunday would be pretty good. Uh, also, Nick okay. doesn't stream on Sundays, right? So that way we won't be uh, counter-programming him. <laughs> yes, Sunday is definitely our biggest show of the week, so uh, that is right. most definitely the plan. If you can hop back on Sunday, we would love that. We don't have any guests uh, scheduled either. Okay, cool. And even even if we did, you guys could always bounce off each other and whatnot. So that's that's always nice. That's always uh, we love to have that, and we would love to have you back. So thank you very much, Johnson, for your your willingness to be on Bag Talk. Really, really great guest. Uh, I don't think we've had a guest um, this informative in a while. No, uh, a not time. not counting uh, Carter, of course, and a couple of others. But thank you very much for coming on, yeah. and we will definitely have you back on. Maybe this weekend, if uh, if that's uh, looking good for you, definitely drop us a DM and let us know. And uh, yeah, you can always ask Mr. R for uh, for uh, an invitation to the finance chat. I really think you'd be a great asset, and uh, you would probably pick up on some things you didn't know or even. Um, Think about in the chat because we we do be uh, innovating and whatnot with our investment strategies. So I think you'll get something out of it as well. All right, yeah, sounds good. I mean, I'll probably just lurk around and stuff first because um, of course, cause, yeah, because I already have a pre-established thing. But I'm definitely always on the lookout for like new ideas to, you know, uh, work that financial creativity because you know, again, you you never know. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, we love to hear that. Someone always willing to learn and someone always willing to impart advice, not financial advice, of course, but their opinion yes. on uh, some potential moves and whatnot. And everyone in the finance chat is always making moves. So with that, we are going to go ahead and end the show. Thank you so much, everyone who stuck around. Uh, this has gone on for almost two and a half hours. Uh, great stuff. Very in, A very educational stream, you know, as apart from... Uh, usual just improvised streams that we've been doing up until this uh this particular show so i want to go ahead and thank everyone who's been uh donating and whatnot so let's thank the top contributors right now tucker's paladin ati and yui thank you thank you top contributors for all your donos and whatnot and uh, another thank you to Jensen for his great input and his willingness to answer these questions regardless of how small or big they are so uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning into Bag Talk. We will be back this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as usual. And uh, we are going to go ahead and wrap the show. Do you have any final thoughts, Jensen, in particular, before we wrap this up? Uh, I don't know. We went over so much that we probably just don't have time. But um, just I guess, <laughs> I guess just tune in on Sunday, and then we'll just pick back up. Or if... Uh, yeah, you know, uh, some of you actually had questions about my bets, so just go on my Twitter and just look at the latest picture of my predicted bets, and then just pick, and then just pick the ones where it's basically pro Trump and it's like ten cents or so, or you know, well actually it's now twelve cents because <laughs> yeah, every, everyone's well, dump, uh, those Trump money. bets are not getting cheaper, so you better you better hop on it. You don't want to kick yourself later for uh, not hopping on these uh, very cheap bets because uh, the tide oh. is turning. And um, the people who support Trump, who trusted the plan, are going to see the fruits, most definitely for trusting, and uh, definitely w their their ability to hold the bag, because uh, the real bag holders are going to be the ones that walk away from this election with the way bigger bag, and all the libtards are pretty much going to end up poorer than uh, when they came in. <laughs> yeah. Buying these bets at like ridiculous prices, like almost at a dollar and whatnot. So uh, with that, we are going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Thank you, Jensen, again. Really can't, uh, really can't thank you enough for your willingness to be on the show. It's been a great time. We've had a very productive episode. So with that, we are going to go ahead and end the stream. So thank you, everyone, who's been tapped in. We will most definitely be getting to um, more questions and more things in regards to the election betting to cryptocurrency, which is uh, something that uh, oh shit, 
Sorry, I'm like playing Fortnite while I'm talking, <laughs> and I just won. Great, got the got the W on Fortnite while wrapping up the show. That's a great sign. Yeah. So, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the stream. Please follow this man at real June uh, at real Johnson Chan. Please definitely follow him. He will be uh, streaming on D Live. Is that correct? Uh, well, I mean, I would like to, but you know, I probably want to wait till at least there's someone willing to you know watch. <laughs> but um, I only do I only do my bitch shoot videos once a week, and I record it at home at like ten, eleven a.m. in the morning, so uh, Eastern. Uh, you, you've got a lot to say. I gotta say, the potential of you on D Live is very paramount. It's uh, you have a lot of potential to rake in a lot of money that you could potentially reinvest into the market or bets or what have you. I, you have the potential. You have, you really have a lot to say, and it's all good. It's all very helpful stuff. So I really think um, I consider it. You know, I'd yeah. consider, it. and we could always juice you up, always give you send followers your way and whatnot. But um, yeah, that's that's totally up to you. Yeah. But anyways. We're, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the stream for like the eighth time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone who's tapped in. Thank you for all the donos. And with that, we will see you this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Later, everyone. Later, Jensen. We'll see you soon. And uh, definitely tap in with Mr. R in regards to joining the finance chat. We'd love to have you there. Just a quick word of discretion. It gets a little crazy. It gets a little... Uh, little unoptical at some times, but uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, there's a lot of information to be uh, viewed upon, for sure. All right. Sounds like my place. I'll probably send in a thing <laughs> uh, tonight, probably after this. Awesome, man. Love to see you there. So we'll, we'll tap in with you this Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if anything comes up, just let us know. Just let us know. But uh, yes, you've been, a, you've been a great guest. Uh, very, very informative, and we love guests that are very informative and know the things that they talk about as in depth as you do. So, we would love to have you again. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, with that, yeah. uh, I'll see you very soon in the finance chat. Yep. Same. Well, I'd say that was actually pretty awesome. Uh, actually, I want to check to see if anyone's even looking at the. Uh, D Live on my thing. Um, well, let me take a look. Can I even see the great show? Of oh yeah, thanks, Water Griper. Yeah, actually, I do see a bunch of uh, people following. And then, uh, oh yeah, you also donated me an ice cream, so uh, yeah, it's gonna make me uh, fat and stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we're totally tapped in. So. I think the plan will be Sunday. I'll when they say it was the biggest show, so I'll do Sunday, and then I think what I might consider doing is every time I do my bit shoot videos, I'll actually just make that live instead of um, uh, what should I call it? Instead of just me recording, which will be the exact same thing, but the difference is I'll actually be able to just see if anyone's in the chat and they just ask me questions then. But it's, but it's in the morning, so that's why I don't really expect too many people there. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I definitely would like to, because I used to do Twitch streaming, but then no one really watched, so that's why I stopped doing it. I was, like, doing five streams of, five streams a week, so I was like, well, I'm just spending a lot of time, so, <laughs> and nobody to interact with. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah, so I'm probably just going to end this here. Um, I'm going to try to download the video so I can put it up on BitChute as a backup archive. But, uh, yeah, I'll probably just see all of you on Sunday, uh, unless something comes up. So, uh, yeah, enjoy your Thanksgiving, everyone. And then um, if you have questions, I guess just save it for Sunday. Or then if I do a live stream next coming Tuesday, because that's when I do my next BitChute video, you know, maybe you could just, you know, ask there. Yep, it's tough to get an audience streaming. Yeah, especially when you're starting from scratch. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Well, we'll definitely see each other again, though. So, um, yeah. So again, check my Twitter for the... Um, actually, can I even type in this? Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, so just if you want my like, predicted bets, just look on the, the, la the latest picture. I believe there's six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, and then just pick the uh, ten... The 10 to 12 cent bets that are basically pro-Trump. And then, um, yeah, well, where's the D-Live thing? 
And then, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, if you want to just copy my bets, so. All right, I better get off. I gotta rehydrate my uh, my eyes because like I wasn't blinking, so now they're dry. So all right, uh, see you all on Sunday. Yeah, thanks for tuning in.